Hi there, and welcome back for another Saturday video. This Saturday, I actually want to talk about audiobooks and things that I have listened to recently that I have really, really enjoyed. If you hear music in the background, I'm sorry, but Dave came home early from work today, and it's supposed to be recording today, so it's we're going to work around the background noise. My first teaching job was in North Carolina, and so we would often travel back to New York over holidays, things like that, and it was a 15 hour car drive. So to say that it was lengthy and we needed something to listen to is an understatement for sure. Dave was the one who actually suggested we start doing audiobooks in the car. And so together we would sit down and we would come up with an audiobook title that we really wanted to listen to. That was actually how we started listening to Six of Crows was he found it and was really into the idea. And so it spawned from there. I used to use Audible, but we were trying to, trying to, cut back on our Amazon consumption. And instead, I now use Libro FM because it supports indie bookstores in my area. Plus, you also can get Educator ALCs, which are advanced listener copies of books. So I was paying for a subscription and I actually paused it because we have so many credits built up at this point because there's every month there's like six new options of ALCs that I get to pick and listen from. So I haven't run into the situation where I've actually needed to purchase an audiobook in a while. I am not sponsored by Libro FM, but if they wanted to, I would gladly accept. At my current job, I now have a 45 minute commute, so it still is pretty lengthy amount of time. So audiobooks are a great thing for me to listen to on my way to and from school. There are a couple of incredible titles that I've listened to recently, and I wanted to share them with you, the summary and just like a brief review of what I thought about them. All right, here we go. Let's talk about some audiobooks today. I'm currently listening to How the Word is Passed by Clint Smith. It is something that is actually coming out at the end of May, but right now it is an advanced listener copy from Libro FM. Clint Smith throughout this book is taking the reader to different monuments and plantations throughout the United States and really diving in to the authentic history of plantations and the monuments behind them. And he is looking at how slavery has been central in the shaping of our country. I've already listened to the part about the Monticello Plantation and the Whitney Plantation. I'm currently at the Anglo prison facility that also used to be a plantation. And it is just full of deep history that they don't teach you in the textbooks, right? You're learning so much basic history and not how racism has really been built in our country to maintain power and control over certain groups of people. Clint Smith has done a wonderful job. It is thoroughly researched. I'm really enjoying it. And by enjoying it, I'm learning a lot. It's not an enjoyable topic to learn about, but it is so crucial to know about this basis of our country. You can't just say, oh yeah, you know, that happened in the past, so we don't need to talk about it anymore. Eh, wrong answer. Like it is incredibly crucial to be talking and having these conversations now to understand the, the playing field of politics and economics and everything in our structure of our country today. I recently finished listening to The Cost of Knowing by Brittany Morris, and that was one book that was a really high anticipated release for me for the spring. I was really looking forward to reading it, and unfortunately listening to it was very timely with some of the current situations that were going on in our country. We've just witnessed the deaths of several more people in our country at the hands of police, including a 13-year-old boy, Adam Toledo. The reason that I bring this up is because it's incredibly relatable to the cost of knowing and what happens in this story. Ever since their parents died in a car accident, 16-year-old Alex has had these visions. When his palms touch different items, he can see what's going to happen with those items. And he cannot figure out how to get rid of it. It's causing a lot of stress and anxiety. And he just wants to be a normal 16-year-old boy without seeing constantly what's going to happen as he puts his hands on things. He ends up having a vision of his younger brother Isaiah's impending death and he freaks out. He previously had a vision of his friend Sean dying and then Sean died and he did nothing to stop it. So this guilt has been overwhelming him and he is not going to let Isaiah die. So he is like trying to figure out even if he can't stop it, how can he make the most of Isaiah's last couple of days? And it just spawns into this whole conversation about racism and police brutality and the experience 
experiences of young black men in our country, the fear that they have to live with, whether they have their hood up or down, whether they walk or run, where they go, when they go, who they're with. It's just this very powerful conversation where you are in their shoes experiencing it all. And it's something that I will never have to personally experience. I'm never going to have to live with that kind of fear and just seeing how other people have to live and think because of the color of their skin is horrifying. It's horrifying. And it was just such a powerful read. It really shook me listening to it, but it was really, really, really well done. If you get a chance to listen to it, I strongly suggest it. There is something so powerful about the window aspect of books and being able to see into the lives of other people and their experiences. On a little bit of a later note, I listened to Maisie by Melanie Crowder and it was lighthearted. It was fun. It's all about a 17 year old girl, Maisie, who lives in Nebraska. Her dream is not to work on the family farm for the rest of her life, but to be a star on Broadway. And so she's done ballet classes since she was really little. She auditions at all these different plays all around Lincoln and the surrounding Nebraska area. And she's sweet and naive and has this long-term boyfriend who's like the love of her life. But she does not want to commit herself to being a farm wife until she knows for sure that she has tried every avenue to become a star on Broadway first. She just feels like if she doesn't try it, she's going to end up regretting it. Her grandmother ends up passing away pretty early in the book and leaves her $200, which it takes place in the 1940s. So it's a huge chunk of change for her. She's able to go and leave, go to New York City, and she has a six-week time period until the money runs out to get cast into something. She goes through rejection after rejection. She's a big boned girl. She's not super slender. And she really struggles with trying to remain true to herself and not conforming to what everybody on Broadway wants her to be to fit this stereotypical role. It was a super cute story. It was light and fluffy, and it's not something that I normally would have picked out, but it was a really fun listen to, and I really enjoyed the voice actor as well. Light and fluffy book that I ended up listening to through Libro FM was Love and Olives by Jenna Evans Welch. It takes place in Santorini, Greece, where Liv, her dad is Greek, he and her mom split when she was younger. Her dad is an Atlantis hunter, like the the lost city of Atlantis hunter, and he's convinced that he has found it and he needs her help to like film a documentary that shows exactly where it is. Now, she hasn't spoken with her dad in years. It's only been recently after he walked out of their lives that he has started to communicate via postcard. So she's really apprehensive about the fact that her mom is like, you're going and doing this and you're going to have a great time in Greece. So there's a lot of mixed emotions. There's a lot of baggage that she's coming with where she's seeing her father for the first time since she was a little kid. And now all of a sudden they have to build and rebuild this relationship that's been fractured for so long. The boy who is helping her father film the documentary is like crushing on her hardcore. There's a lot of flirting going on, but she's dating someone and that kind of ended abruptly, not that they aren't still dating when she goes, but there was a disagreement about something. And so she's kind of trying to figure out how to fix that while ignoring her feelings for the boy, I can't remember his name right now, that is helping her father film the documentary. And so it's like this love, meet cute kind of story. And just, it makes me want to go to Santorini because all of the descriptions of Santorini were absolutely stunning. It sounds like an incredibly gorgeous place to visit. And I have now added it to my bucket list because of this story. Up next is Roman and Jewel by Dana L. Davis. This book was a riot. I loved listening to it and I really think a huge part of that is because of the voice actor. Her name was Cheney Waits and she just brought a whole nother level of dimension awesomeness to the protagonist. It was fantastic. So now my favorite voice actor is Lauren Forking and then my second favorite is Channy Waits. Like amazing, amazing job. Totally worth the listen to just for her interpretation of the protagonist. Hysterical. This is another Broadway-esque story where Jersey James is 16 and she is just always auditioning for different roles on Broadway. Her hope of being the lead, she like gets so close in the audition and then come to find out she's actually going to be the understudy for like this really popular celebrity, Cinny. They're just trying to build up the name of the show so they want to use like a big name celebrity instead and 
Jersey is just crushed when she finds out that she didn't get the lead. But she's the understudy for the lead. The whole premise of the Broadway show is that it is a modern retelling of Romeo and Juliet. So it is called Roman and Jewel. And it is supposed to be very Hamilton-esque, but Romeo and Juliet. So it's got like the hip hop and like a lot of choreography and a lot of singing. And it sounds like in theory, it's a really cool show. And if it ever became a real thing, I would totally go see it. But Jersey, the first day she meets Zeppelin who is playing Roman, the main lead. And she is just like instantly in love with him. And it becomes this whole drama between Cinny and her and um, Zeppelin. Jersey is just kind of trying to figure out like how she fits in. There is so much drama that happens in this book. And it was just so, I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm normally not someone for retellings, but I, I like, and I really think it has to do with the voice narrator. She was so good. She was so good. It was totally worth every second of listening to it. Up next was something that as I was listening to it, I was not sure how I was going to feel, but the longer that I sat on it, the more I love this story. The story that I'm talking about is Lock and West by Alexander C. Everhart. And Oh, this is like a really gut-wrenching book. There's so many different levels of complexity that are at play in this story. You have two very different characters, Locke and Wes. Locke is a really awkward character where he in his head is constantly um, repeating and he's counting and he's been homeschooled for most of his life. And this is like his first time in public school where West is like very flamboyant and very open and gay and like he gives no shits about anything. They they share a lot of secrets back and forth. They find it every time that they're together. It's like harder and harder to be separate from each other. And it's just like such a cute story. And there's so much crap that both characters are experiencing. And they really come together and like work to figure out how they can better their lives together and get past the issues that they have been dealt. The last audiobook that I've listened to recently that I want to share with you is Charming as a Verb by Ben Fleet. I had not read anything of his previously. I know that he has the field guide to the North American teenager. I have it actually right there, um, but I hadn't ever read or listened to any of his before and I really enjoyed the story. We have Halty who is the protagonist and he's just incredibly charismatic. He can pretty much get whatever he wants by just charming people. He is running a dog walking business pretending to be like this big corporation company and it's literally just him. His family lives in an apartment complex where his dad is a maintenance worker. So it's like this deal that they get to live there, but then he's like on call all the time, 24 seven. So they don't have a ton of money. He has been working his tail off, pun intended with the dogs, to get as much money as possible to make sure that he can afford to go to Columbia because that's all he's ever wanted. It's been his dream since he was like a little, little kid. Nothing is going to stop him or get in his way. But his neighbor, Corinne, who uh, many of his classmates would deem as stuck up and a goody two shoes, she ends up uncovering his little plan that he has with the dog walking business and she blackmails him. She tells him that she will ruin his reputation if he does not help her change her image at school. And it becomes like this whole big thing of him bringing her to a party for the first time and she had never been to a party and like having her sit with different people at lunch and getting to know different people that they had gone to school with for years. And as with many YA romances, there is an enemies to lovers trope and their friendship, what becomes a friendship, becomes something even more, something more than they could have imagined. The conversations between the characters was always like really sharp and really witty and it was just like a fun, lighthearted listen to. There were a couple of parts where I was so into this book that I was literally driving in my car going, oh my god, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Oh, for me, I know then that it has been a really good book if I get to the point where I'm starting to tell the characters like what not to do as I'm listening while driving. Anyway, it's a really good story. I'm looking forward to reading his other book and I hope that it's like just as lighthearted and witty and fun as charming as a verb was. Those are just some of the audiobooks that I've listened to recently that I have really, really, really enjoyed. 
I strongly suggest if you are an educator and would love some free ALCs every month that you get to pick out, check out Libro FM. And even if you're not an educator, you should definitely check out Libro FM anyway, because they're helping to support local indie bookstores in your area. That's all that I have for this Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. And I hope that you are able to find something that you're interested in listening to soon. If you have any audiobook suggestions for me based on some of the things I talked about today, I would love to get some ideas. I have a couple of credits sitting in my Libro FM account that I could totally use. That's it. That's all I have. I will see you back here next Saturday for a new video. Have a great week.